My next guest takes on Jesse Erickson at NEF 22 on April 23rd. Devin Powell joins me here on the program for the very first time. Devin, how are you? Uh, wonderful. Yourself? Hey, fantastic. And thank you for asking me. Not everyone asks how I'm doing, so really <laughs> appreciate that. And uh, right off the bat, Devin, uh, for those who aren't familiar with your backstory, how did you get involved in combat sports? Uh, honestly, uh, I wasn't a wrestler or anything. I found a job at a passport center out of high school and I became complacent and I kind of hated everything about it. I was searching for kind of a new route to go for something that I could become passionate about. I get home from the passport center working for second shift and every night WEC wreckage would be on. I'd watch Carlos Condit just wreck fools and I I decided I was going to go find an MMA gym at that time. It was Seacoast MMA and BJJ. And I took to it right off the bat. I became passionate and, and I just loved it and then just started going every day. And that, that eventually evolved to all of this. And you mentioned the WEC there. You kind of bummed a little bit that they didn't let that go on a little bit longer, uh, you know, kind of as like a feeder organization. Because I certainly miss those days when they used to have the cards, you know, and verses and everything else. Uh, it, was, it was a really good product. Yeah, I was a big fan because you could kind of, I mean, we, we have a lot of different organizations at this point now with Bellator and World Series and the UFC all being pretty pretty high up there. But um, WC kind of had something special with the little guys. They had a few higher weights. You know, Brian Stan was in there, and you, you know, they, but I don't think they really did too much with the higher weights. It was nice kind of having the small guys have their own spot to always, you know, shine. Now it's every once in a while we get to see Demetrius or we get to see – Dom Cruz when he's healthy, but you know I, I definitely liked it a lot. It was nice when it was separate. Now, now you mentioned earlier there that uh, you, you know you work for a passport company. Are you still doing that? Like, what pays the bills along with MMA for you right now? Um, I actually own my own mixed martial arts academy now, No Stos MMA in Summersworth, New Hampshire. So I teach full time. I'm also the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coach for um, Danvers, uh, the uh, St. John Prep School there, and. Um, Every once in a while, I, I pick up a job at North Andover High School. I took this one off because of the fight coming up this semester, but I also teach a wellness credit there. So I'm pretty much teaching jujitsu or kickboxing or Thai, you know, things I'm passionate about every day and then also doing my own training. That's so, great. And as yeah. nice they go, they go hand in hand. You know, you're not like stuck in an office or like in your case, stuck in a passport office, you know, having to go do long shifts and then go do training. So that, that's awesome to hear that you figured out a way to kind of make it all work. And uh, I was looking at your career here. You made your pro debut in 2012 and uh, you've amassed a five and one record so far. But I noticed you only fought once in 2015. Why was that? Was that injuries? Was that a hard time getting fights? Why, why just the one time last year? Uh, yeah, that that was honestly just um, I. After I fought Lemke, I had, like, uh, I, I think I, I opened the academy um, a week or at the most two weeks after. And my biggest thing was making sure everything fell into place there. And I really, I mean, I never lost interest in fighting or anything. But my biggest, uh, the biggest thing to me was making sure the academy thrived. And the thing is with fighting, you have a timeline. You know, I have a four-year-old. I, I don't spar hard often. Um, I try and be really smart about my training because you want some longevity with your career, but eventually it's going to subside and you need something else. And I don't want to work at Burger King, you know, props to the people that enjoy it and that are able to do that for a living. But I want to teach jujitsu to little kids and I want to, I want to teach mixed martial arts. So I needed to make sure while I was still young and healthy, I really pushed hard to, to make that explode. And our academy is doing awesome right now. And I'm also able to staff the place so that I can get my own training in and also, you know, get out and, and see some other people and, and do the things I need to do. So that was pretty much it. You know, I, I was just really focused, invested in my academy. And on top of that, I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to get in there without putting in everything I know I'm capable of. I'm, I'm definitely a really hard worker. And if I'm not putting in the correct camp, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to show up being only part of what I'm capable of. Well, let's talk about this fight here. Uh, NEF 22, I uh, take it on Jesse Erickson, who's won three straight fights. Uh, how do you think you match up against him? Uh, good. I think we have similar styles. You know, we're both BJJ Brown belts. Um, he, his striking's come a long way, I think. Um, we're, uh, 
we're definitely similar, you know. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll see where the fight ends up. I really don't have any idea. I don't. I don't really have a preference. I just. I just want to get in and get in a fight with him. We were supposed to fight before he got injured. Um, thankfully, he's healthy. You know. Uh, you know. I know he's a family man too. So, and we got to kind of you know, look out for each other, regardless of us fighting. It's still something that, uh, you know, you never really want to wish that kind of thing upon someone. So he's healthy, things happening. I'm really excited. I think a lot of people want to see this fight and uh, I think it's going to be a good one to watch. And who are some of the people helping you get ready for this fight? Um, I have a lot of different guys at my academy, um, uh, different coaches, guys that have been with me all along like Adam Rivera, Troy Pickering's been coming down. He's, uh, both those guys are from Seacoast MMA days. Um, I have Port City BJJ over in Portsmouth. That's where I got my brown belt. Those guys, I mean, they're, they're kind of tucked away, but the jujitsu there is absolutely incredible. Three black belts on the mat all the time, and they're just freaks. Um, and then at my academy, I have Keegan Hornstra, who's a phenomenal pad feeder. I have this kid, Tim Hagen, who's just a little prodigy for the Muay Thai. Um, and then I have a handful of great state champ wrestlers always trying to put me on my back. And, uh, you know, just I got a lot of different guys, different styles. Um, we got a, a handful of really talented MMA fighters. Cody Lightfoot's able to lay his fat on me a bit and get heavy. Don't worry, he's not too sensitive about that. He talks about himself. Say, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, d a bunch of different guys. Um, you know, I I've been trying to get over to see Hanan Borges, who's a really good BJJ black belt. He's, um, he's, uh, I think he's around 10 in like the IBJJF rankings. He's, he's a bad man. I was going over there a bit to see him with, uh, with their team flow, which is a really awesome gym. I think it's Lowell. I'm the, I live in Maine, so every time I travel, I just plug it in my my phone and show up. But but yeah, I got a, a bunch of different options. You know, honestly, it's it's tough to get anywhere um, with with owning the academy and teaching seven days a week. But I I don't just sit back when I teach. I roll every single night. I I do everything I'm supposed to, even though I'm I'm instructing as well. Um, but when I when I get out, it's to those places. Right. Now I got to get a prediction for this fight. How do you see this one going down on April 23rd? Um, you know, I, I think first round stoppage, you know, I, I'm not going to say how, but I, I think that, you know, I think I have the tools, you know, I'm sure he said the same thing, but that's why we fight. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, Devin, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the program. I just remind my audience where they can get a hold of you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs. The floor is yours, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can get at me, you can check out my academy, Nostos MMA, it's N-O-S-T-O-S -O -O MMA on Facebook, or you just type that in right to the website action, um, and then just, just gotta thank all my teammates, everybody at Nostos, everybody at Port City that, that helped me get, get there, um, Jay, Jay Mansfield, Derek Stevens, James DeLuca, those guys all gained the blessing to open my own academy, Bill Jones is the one that actually made it all possible. He used to run the shop, and I pretty much took over with renovations and, and made it into a whole new facility with a lot of you know, the, the, the vibes of the, the original shop. So without him, none of it was possible. Without those guys, none of it was possible. Um, and then friends and family, you know who you are. Um, everybody supported me the whole way. So nothing but good things. Check me out April 23rd. It's going to be a good show for sure.